on the Raiders Rundown, we are going to talk about who's missing at practice, the future of Cleveland Farrell after signing Jordan Jenkins, the Raiders have also released Kenny Young, what does the linebacker room look like, plus Nate Hobbs gives Derek Carr his first interception of training camp. All this and more will be discussed on the Raiders Rundown, so make sure you like this video if you haven't already, and subscribe to the Raiders Rundown for more content. So Tashawn Reed of The Athletic is reporting that Cleveland Farrell has missed practice since July 30th, and I think this is a big concern for this guy because he's in the last year of his contract after we declined his fifth year option and then the Raiders have also signed Jordan Jenkins. The Raiders signed Jordan Jenkins. Clearly they want to feel comfortable with him, maybe Malcolm Kuntz, Deshaun Bauer being the backup edge rushers. Cleveland Furl, his role on this team was as a backup. We do know earlier in this year he talked about how he transitioned to outside linebacker. He's not going to be having his hand on the ground at all this year. He's going to be backing up Chandler Jones and Max Crosby if he's available and he has not been available so who knows what the future holds for Cleveland Farrell the Raiders would not be able to move on from him by just releasing him because they would offset the amount of money they would eat 9.2 million dollars in dead money and I believe they'd only free up 9.2 million dollars as well so the Raiders really need to find maybe a trade suitor for Cleveland Farrell or try to get him back to see if he can contribute this year Josh McDaniels has said that he played against Jordan a lot in the AFC East we know Jordan Jenkins this edge rusher was with the New York Jets for five years and hey that's what that familiarity will do for you you know what it's like to have to scheme up against this guy and game plan against this guy so you know how dangerous he can be so we don't know how much Jordan Jenkins is getting paid right now and that would actually help us figure out basically who's gonna for sure make this 53 man roster in terms of the backup edge rushers I'm predicting the Raiders are only gonna keep three backup edge rushers based on what they've done in the past and based off how a lot of depth charts work so you're gonna have Max Crosley Chandler Jones obviously be your starters who are the three that they're gonna keep it's gonna be to Sean Bauer Jordan Jenkins and Malcolm Koontz these are the three guys that are really in the mix yes we've seen a couple other characters out there in preseason but when you're talking about the depth chart who's number two who's number three who do you see playing immediately in that first quarter it's Koontz it's to Sean Bauer and it's gonna be Jordan Jenkins I believe this upcoming Saturday Josh McDaniels and Patrick Graham are probably gonna to want to see how this guy competes in comparison to them another big story is Josh Jacobs missing some time he hasn't been around since August 12th and we often wondered hey is he not playing in this Vikings preseason game because he's solidified as the number one guy but it turns out since Jacobs Denzel Perryman have missed some time since the 12th we know the preseason game was on the 14th then perhaps he didn't play just due to injury we're not sure but this is something to closely monitor as Josh McDaniels wants to figure out hey what does he have in the rest of the running back room and maybe this is kind of an opportunity this is an opportunity give some other guys some reps not have to put Jacobs out there because to me what's the point he's the number one back but a person who's not the number one back right now and is kind of fighting for a legit spot on this depth chart is Kenyon Drake it's it's Kenyon Drake and it's kind of sucks because we knew we were hyped up about the Drake and Josh connection prior to the 2021 season and then Kenyon Drake had the ankle injury and really it's kind of not gone well since and it's really not his fault man that really sucks when you're dealing with injuries like that you saw Amir Abdullah get some hype throughout training camp Albert Breer of Sports Illustrated also wrote a report that Amir Abdullah looked great at training camp and maybe he could fulfill this type of James White role that Josh McDaniels had with the Patriots but we originally thought Drake was going to fill that role and now I think there's going to be this competition that we need to look at in this upcoming game against the Dolphins hey how is the Drake versus Abdullah situation panning out and guess what Abdullah didn't play against the Vikings and he was healthy so this means according to Vic Tafer Abdullah seems a little higher on the depth chart right now than Kenyon Drake so hopefully Kenyon Drake goes out there balls out and gets his spot on this team some good news for the Raiders is that Anthony Aver is back at practice and we reported earlier that Trayvon Mullen was back at practice along with Rocky Sin. Nate Hobbs has been there in preseason at camp the whole entire time he's been healthy but now our four top guys are all healthy so this is going to get really exciting figuring out who's the number one outside guy you know num number two outside and the slot Nate Hobbs we knew has played the slot historically with the Raiders in 2021 however we saw him playing outside in preseason so you often wonder is he in the mix for that is there another competition brewing at slot cornerback but Nate Hobbs is making his case to be the number one cornerback on the team and that's a great thing if you are a Raiders fan and here he goes picking off Derek Carr giving Derek Carr his first interception Nate Hobbs made a hell of a play and took it to the house tough play from Hobbs Carr's first interception of camp reported by your boy Q of Locked On Raiders so great to see that 
that for Nate Hobbs. And like I said, great for us Raiders fans because this guy's on a bargain deal. This guy was selected in like the fifth round of 2021. That means you're going to have this guy cheap for the next few years, only making roughly $900,000. I think that's next year. I think this year he's making even less than that. So, hey, it's great to have a great player and hopefully the Raiders compensate him kindly when the time comes because you know what? We need some more homebrew talent, some more homegrown talent, talent that you compensate. And that shows to other rookies that, hey, you, you need to work hard because then you could be like Max Crosby. You could be like Hunter Renfro. And then hopefully Nate Hobbs in the future, if it comes to that, our players get paid when they ball out on rookie contracts with the Raiders. That's the message you want to send. So Kenny Young has been released by the Raiders today. That was the move that allowed us to free up the roster spot for Jordan Jenkins. Kenny Young used to be on the Rams. He's a linebacker and really only appeared in that Jacksonville Jaguars game. So maybe the staff wasn't really high on Kenny Young. Who knows? But Vincent Bosnior of the Las Vegas Review Journal believes this will open up a spot for Luke Masterson, who you've seen playing in both games of preseason. As this linebacker position battle shakes up, you look at who we have right now. Who could be the two backups? Or maybe actually just probably one guy when you really think about it to back up Denzel Perryman, Jayon Brown, and Divine Diablo because I believe the extra linebacker, Jayon Brown or Divine Diablo, is basically a backup. Since we're going to be in the sub defense a lot, you're probably only going to have two linebackers out there really most of the time. But Perryman, Diablo, Jayon Brown, we know these guys are probably a lock based on how they're compensated, based on how they've been playing lately. Darian Butler's been making his case. He has a connection with Antonio Pierce, the linebacker coach, being from Arizona State. Curtis Bolton signed a little later. We don't know what's happening there, but had some hype when he was a rookie. And then also Luke Masterson, who Benson Bosnior has been talking about. Maybe he can make his case. But this is going to be a tough battle in these next two games between these three guys, Butler, Bolton, Masterson. I would pay attention to that if I'm a Raiders fan. Who do you think is going to make the roster out of these three guys? Based on playing time and what we've seen so far with the depth chart, it really does seem like it's a match between Masterson and Butler for that spot. That Personally, if I had to give it to someone, I think I would roll with Butler right now. So even though the Raiders have had a lot of people come back, people like Mullen, people like Jonathan Hankins and Bilal Nichols, there's still some people missing in and out. Even Waller came back and now he was gone again today. We're not exactly sure why. Mumford was even missing from practice since, since yesterday. So the Raiders still have some problems to figure out with their roster. Hopefully everybody comes back healthy though and we can have a real free, fair, and fun competition for all these players to make this 53-man roster. Hey, my name is Wi-Fi Willie. Like this video if you haven't already and subscribe to the Raiders Rundown for more Raiders content. Peace out and I hope you have a good one.